and read down to verse 26, Romans 8 and 19. And when you have it, say amen. 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 That sounds strong. Like we have a lot of Bibles today. Romans 8 and 19. For the earnest expectation, everybody say expectation, of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Now take that in. For the earnest expectation of the creature. Guess what you and I are? We're the creature. And so our expectation waited for the manifestation of the Son of God. For we, verse 24, for we are saved by hope but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Understand that? You guys with me there? Right. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities or our weaknesses, our inabilities is what that means in the Hebrew. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. I want to teach to us this morning, preach for a while on this subject, expectation level high. Expectation level high. With every head bowed this morning, Heavenly Father, I love you. I appreciate you today. And I thank you for your word. I thank you for this people. I thank you, Lord, for the Spirit of God that leads us into all truth and righteousness, Lord. And I pray this morning that there would be a fervency within the embodiment of this body, Lord. That we would come to you with an expectancy, Lord, equal or greater than what we could ever, ever imagine. And so, God, I pray tomorrow, this morning that you would open up the heart, that you would open up the mind. God, minister to the soul of mankind today as your spirit would. I love and appreciate the fact, Lord, that you are able to do abundant and exceeding, Lord. There's nothing too big, nothing too small, nothing too great, nothing too wide. Lord, I know right now that you can move upon every condition in this place. But, Lord, I need a person to believe that you can do it, Lord. And not only believe that you can do it, but can believe you can do it right now, Jesus. We need people in here who have expectations expectations of you, Lord, that you might move upon them, not that you might, but that you will, Lord, and so I'm praying right now that you would minister according to your perfect will, and a minister according to your perfect greatness, Lord, a minister right now to the need that's in the heart and the soul, in Jesus' name, and everybody say amen, amen, amen. Expectation level high. How many want a high expectation level of Jesus Christ? Amen. The Lord bless you. You can be seated. I want to try to lay a foundation from the onset of this sermon. Lay a, a foundation that our speech and our manner of conversation affects who we are. The way we talk and the way we converse affects what we are. The way you and I speak, more importantly, has an effect on what you and I will become. You see, our emotions are governed by our limited understanding. I didn't call anyone stupid, but hear me. Our minds are limited. Why? Because most of us in this building use about 10% of our brain. And if you're only using 10% of your brain capacity, then I would have to call that limited. Can I get an amen? amen. So I'm not speaking bad about anybody, but realize this morning, that our emotions are governed by our limited understanding. Our flesh refutes God, but our spirits cry out for a sincere desire to know God. And the level that we 
we know Him. It will be by the level that we understand Him. And the level that we experience Him will come from the level of expectation that we have of Him. Hear me. The things that you and I understand, the things that you and I will ever experience, the things that you and I will ever know about God will come from a level of expectation that I have of God. If you ever want to see blind eyes open, hear me somebody, you will have to have an expectation that Jesus Christ can open the blind eyes. If you ever want to see diabetes healed in the body, cancer healed in the body, diabetes and that God can heal the, the, the cancer and, and God can heal the myeloma in a body. If you ever want to see your drug and alcohol addicted mother or father, sister or brother, aunt or uncle, the delivered from the debilitating spirit that has encapsulated them, you and I must first believe and have an expectation that when they Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ can and not only will sir, uh, save them. You need to understand today, church, that there is an expectation that I get up with every Sunday morning when I wake up and I begin to clothe this old body. I come and they should expect God to have a move. I come with an expectation that somebody's life is going to be changed, not because of my preaching, not because of the song service, but because I am calling on the name that is above every name, a name that every knee will bow out, a name that every tongue will confess, a name that has made the lame to already walk and the blind to already see. I'm talking about a man by the name of Jesus. I know that when I walk into this building that he's going to be there, and if he's going to be there, I expect him to move. I don't expect him to sit down and walk the hurts of my people stay. Right. But I expect Him to move upon them. Paul said it like this. He said, my expectation and my hope will be found in Jesus Christ. I may live or I might die. But when it's all said and done, my friend, know this. I have found my hope in Him. Philippians 1 says it like uh, 1 and 20 says, According to my earnest expectation and my hope, that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also, Christ shall be what? Magnified in what? My body, not in your body not in somebody else's body. He said, I want everybody to know that my God is going to be magnified in me. I don't care if He's magnified in you. I don't care if He's magnified in the church around town. I don't care if He's magnified in the song or the song service. I want my God to be magnified in me that I might be able to walk somewhere, that I might be able to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And so Come on, somebody, help me this morning. Hope is seeing things as they are. 
they should be, not as they are. 